Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura or Laura X Stitches and I'm back for my October update. It's getting very confusing about which month it is at the moment. Um, hope you're all well. Thanks for stopping by. I just realized you can see my cupboard of shame. That's all right. That shelf looks nice. That one does it. <laughs> oh well. Um, what's been happening? Just a really quick life update and then we'll get into the stuff. I've got many piles of things. I don't know how long this is going to go for. Um, I'm thinking it'll probably more than be more than average, but every time I say that, it's not. So who knows? Um, school went back since I saw you last. Um, I had my two weeks of school holidays and I'm back teaching for term four, which is the last term of the year. Obviously in Australia, we finish in December, just before Christmas. So um, yeah, it's the last term with my class, which is sad. Um, every class is always so different, so it's nice. Um, they're a good group of kids. I have been teaching the same group of kids, as in like the same cohort of this kind of two year levels that are together um, for two years now. So next year I'll be teaching something else or another grade another group of kids so um it's a little bit a little bit sad but I'm happy to move on to something else as well uh speaking of school it looks like I'm going to be doing some more study um I'm hoping to eventually get my master's um but it's going to take a little while because as a full-time teacher you only study for um four four days a subject and you do two subjects a year so it's going to take a while um, but that's okay. So I'm really looking forward to starting that and I'm hoping that's going to help with my personal, personal knowledge as well as future job opportunities. So we'll see how that goes, but I'm trying to just like sort myself out for the future, I guess. Um, another life update, my partner and I, Matt and I went to PAX, um, with his best friend and his best friend's girlfriend. Um, PAX is a conference uh, convention, probably more the word, in Melbourne um, every October. It's also um, around the world as well. I think mostly America. I'm not really sure where else it is. But it is to do with gaming and a whole bunch of different types of gaming. So it had your consoles and PC gaming and stuff. But it also had tabletop gaming and that is what we are into. We love tabletop gaming particularly Dungeons and Dragons or D&D. So we were looking around that area the most. Um, we did free mini painting and I'm going to show you because I'm actually on the desk. Matt's taken over my stitching room <laughs> and this desk is full of his um, painting stuff. So it's got his little paints, which look like this, for example, and um, minis. And like, for example, this is what a mini would look like. This is a a uh, dragonborn fighter, I guess. I think so. Anyway, um, that's what they look like. And Matt paints them really, really well. And so we did um, a thing where you sit down at a big table, you wait for a seat and you get a free one of those and you get to paint it. And I painted this really cool like lion fish looking thing. I did amazing shading on it. It was the best mini I've ever painted. And I lost it. I was so sad because they're so small. It was like wrapped up in my cardigan and then I took out my cardigan to put on and I completely forgot. So that was really frustrating. But um, yeah, so that was really fun the whole day. We went and saw a couple of panels. So we saw one about licensing. Um, so it was a guy that publishes in a big company that publishes a whole bunch of D&D campaigns to do with like franchises. So things like Game of Thrones and stuff like that. And then we went to a panel which had a whole bunch of podcasters on there um, that do podcast, podcasts around D&D &D, and they were talking about their characters and stuff like that. And that has led me to listen to another podcast. That's really cool. Um, the next day we went to Ikea and this is, <laughs> this is where the life update comes back in, I guess. But we went to Ikea um, and obviously we're, we live in the country in Victoria, so we don't really have an Ikea anywhere. So when we go to Melbourne... We went there. I thought we were getting an outdoor setting. Nope. Matt had an idea to get a whole bunch of bookcases to line one of our walls in the lounge room. So we've built three. There's one more to go. And we also built a TV stand the night we got back. So um, that's been my life. And this week I haven't really stitched a whole lot in terms of after school. Last night I we really quickly made one because we bought like two of the same. So there was two skinny bookcases and two cabinets 
and this TV stand. So the TV stand was easy. We worked through the first two of each and we just did the second one of the skinny bookcase. And um, apparently it's a lot easier when you do it a second time. So that was really quick. Um, and then I made sure I was able to stitch. And I actually stayed up to like 11 o'clock, <laughs> which is currently late for me, which is pretty embarrassing. But anyway, that's been my life the past few weeks. Um, just doing stuff really um reports are coming out for school so my time will be split between that and stitching so anyway let's move on to whips like i said i have a lot to talk about oh if you see any reflection stuff i'm hoping it goes away once i get rid of my um project envelope things because it's just reflecting with the sun by the way it's super duper hot um the past two days have been 37 degrees celsius and 34 degrees celsius um, and today's 24, so it's going up and down a lot. We're in spring, getting really close to summer, and I hate summer. I'm not one of those Australian people that go to the beach and stuff. I just don't, I don't enjoy it. I would rather be at home, um, covered up in a blanket, feeling really cozy. But, you know, what can you do? It's the seasons. Clearly, I need to move to, like, Scotland with Adele <laughs> during the winter time. That sounds good to me. Um... Even though it's like insane winter. I still think I'd enjoy it a lot more than the like 40 degree days we get here. Celsius people. Celsius. So there's lots of sun. Um, I've kind of blocked a bit of it, but we'll see how we go. Let's get into whips anyway. Last time I saw you, I think I was working on some random stuff. I don't really remember. October has been really quick, but also really long. So I don't kind of remember what I did when I last saw you. I think I was like catching up days i'm not really sure um but apparently i worked on because i wrote it down thank god i was working on renaissance mermaid and i do remember doing this i think it was to do with the wheel i was spinning my wheel and it picked it i think <sighs> let's find it so renaissance mermaid is a mirabilia design and that's what she looks like and i'll pop in a picture here of what it looked like when you last saw it in my last update I'm stitching this on a piece of 32 count Joblin by Color Cascade Fabrics and it's called, what's this one called? Oasis, I think. I really hope that's right. I think it's Oasis. Anyway, here she is. So I think what I was doing, mm, so I finished all the hair all the hair's done apart from obviously the beads. I have finished the skin. I'm up to a tail. So everything from here up is done apart from beads. So I've done all the back stitch. I've done all of that. So I really wanted to work on a tail, but the timing just didn't work out. So I didn't get to do any of that, but I did get to stitch back stitch in a chronic and I've never used chronic before. So that was really cool. I didn't mind it. And I will continue to work on that whenever I get to her next in her tail because there's quite a bit in there. So that's Renaissance Mermaid. Um, I don't think she's going to be coming out next month. My November is pretty full. But she will hopefully make some nice appearances in the new year, which is sooner than we think, which is terrifying. Um, where am I going to put these? I'm being reflected on. Okay, then I worked on Kings and Queens. I think I had a spare day right at the end of, of September, so I got my October King done. Um, here's a picture of what it will look like when it's finished and also what it looked like last time you saw it. And I'm stitching this on a piece of Color Cascade in 32 count Lugana in a fabric of the month from earlier in the year or end of last year, I can't remember, but it's not a regular piece in her line. Here we are now. This needle minder is the Raven Claw Diadem Horcrux from Harry Potter. And it is from Once Upon a Needle Minder on Facebook. So that's what we look like overall. I worked on Edward II. He was um, pretty okay. He was just a lot wider than this one. <laughs> As you can see, his robe's quite big. So we're getting there. Um, we'll continue to do that this month, which I'll talk about at the end in my plan section. What was next? Oh, this one's exciting. 
So the next piece I worked on was the class schedule sale by Armada Designs. And here's a picture of what it looked like last time you saw it. And what um, Christy Kirsty, I can't remember the name of the designer. Oops, I'm horrible. Um, she released the last three months, October, November, December, all at once. She did that for a number of reasons. One of them was she knew that Christmas time was coming up. So she wanted people to have more time to do anything like that. Um, she also knew that people were changing her designs quite a bit um, and people were actually doing completely different classes. So she wanted to let them know what classes she was doing so they could change them. And I think that's just amazing. She did not have to do that, um, but she did release them all. So I decided to, in the first week of October, just work on all of them and get it finished. And I did. Here is my finished class schedule. So this is stitched on a piece of 16 count Ada by Picture This Plus in Dusk. So that's all the 12 months and I'm going to take you to the bottom row to look at what I worked on. So the first one for this is October's one was Defense Against the Dark Arts with Professor Lupin. I think I just, I think I took out, yes, I took out um, the Cornish pixie that was in here. It was hanging over the edge and this is the one that we had to leave the border out for and we had to leave the border out for like six stitches so i was a bit like that's a bit annoying that i have to stitch a border now but i did um and i chose to put professor lupin in i know it's hard to see here but you can see it a lot better in real life um because he is like one of my favorite characters in the whole thing let alone a favorite professor of defense against the dark arts so he got to go in there and because i kept the patronus he kind of suited um november's was divination with professor trelawney and this thread in the glass ball crystal ball is a dmc variegated i don't remember the number but it's like a gray it looks really cool this has actually turned out to be one of my favorite blocks because of that i think that design is amazing and i love the thing that it's being held into that's really cool and then of course we had to have care of magical creatures with hagrid and that's the hippogriff in there which was really cool to stitch I can't believe that she was able to put a hippogriff in. It was awesome. So that's really cool. And I'm really hoping I can get this up in my classroom this year before the end of the year, because we have, we are almost finished reading the philosopher's stone as a class. Um, I read to them each day or most days if I can. Um, and we're probably going to watch the movie at the end of the year, because that's a nice way to finish the year together. And they all know how, so same with Harry Potter and, because of how much I talk about it, it's like over half the class are reading through the series, which is just like, it makes my heart full. I love it. So um, there's that and next year I'll have it in my classroom and I think it's just gonna come with me wherever I go. So that's that one, so a beautiful finish. It's very exciting. Next thing I worked on and it's actually what I'm working on now is the, there's that reflection is the legendary creature cell and this is in my taran bag of llamas link to her shop is always in the description um here's a picture of what it looked like last time this is a clouds factory mystery cell for the year so i can't show you what it's gonna look like finished it's being stitched on 16 count ada by picture this plus in nocturne and here we are all together so i'll show you what was last month and then i'll show you what is this month because i've already started it so we're down the bottom this month sorry last month we worked on i'm pretty sure it was v u and v i hope it was but they were significantly creepy <laughs> so you've got euro euro yuli and vicolacus and i'm saying them completely wrong love the tongue it makes me laugh every time i see it because it's got tiny little fangs in there so cute and then this month we've got three letters we've got s t and x and t is thunderbird and i started and finished that yesterday last night that's why i stayed up i wanted to get it done because i started it and it kind of just stitched up really quick so s is swamp monster and x is like xana i think um which is actually kind of pretty so I'm excited to stitch her, but that one's coming to an end too. One more month. Can't believe how quick it's going. And that needle minder on there was a freebie from Taryn when I ordered this because it matches the fabric. Um, 
Okay. Next one was Autumn. This is a magazine pattern from Cross Stitch Crazy. And I'll pop in a picture here of what it looked like last time. Or maybe I'll show you this first. This is what it will look like when it's finished. So it's three panels. And last time I showed you this, I'd finished the first panel, which is the one that's on this page here. I'm not sure what edition this is from. I didn't write it down, but it is cross stitch crazy. It'd be either 2017 or 2016. I'm assuming in near the autumn time. <laughs> um, so yes, hopefully I popped in a picture here of what it will look like. Sorry, of what it looked like last time. And I'm stitching it on 32 count even weave from Sew It All Fabrics, the Australian website. It's just an antique white. Oh, my needle is exposed. There we go. And I actually finished the second panel. I made it a bit of a mission to finish it in October and I just worked on it till it was done. Now when I frame this, it's going to be a lot closer. I just wanted to leave enough room. So that's the panel there with the swans. And I love the reflection in the water. It's really cool. There's a fair bit of um, empty space in there, which is nice because it wasn't all full coverage like the top part. So yeah, two panels done, one to go. Um, and it's a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be, which is nice. So that'll get framed professionally. The Sorry, that need reminder is from Shopmate Designs as well. Um, the example is wrapped around canvas and I do like it, but I think because of the size, I really want it framed. It'll be a nice little cute one to hang up in the living room. Better go there because Matt chose this. So anyway, next is Epic Pokemon. Let me just grab that. Okay, this is um, on my quantum frame. So <laughs> I'm just holding it down here. Um, here's a picture of what it looked like last time and what it will look like when it's finished. I'm currently working on page 12 and yes, I'm still on page 12. I was on there last time. Um, I think I barely stitched on it in September, but here we go. It's a free pattern, so ignore it. Um, here I am. So I've done most of this that you can see here and up there. I stitched diagonally, so... I'm trying to make sure you can still hear me. <laughs> I stitched diagonally, so I go down in 10 by 10 blocks, as you can see with this pattern. I'm currently on this block here. Needleminders, this one's from Needleminder Obsession, and this was a freebie from um, Once Upon a Needleminder when I ordered, when I actually won in a giveaway. And she still gave me that, so it was really sweet. Um, yeah, so I picked this up and I fell in love again. It's what happens when I have like a little break on it. I go, eh, I don't want to stitch anymore. I want to stitch other stuff. Then I pick it up and I go, I love this so much. And I have a bit of a story about um, some ideas for this in my plan section. So yeah, that's where we are. Threads hanging everywhere, but that's what happens when it's a big full coverage. Next two are something a little bit different. Um, the first one is the Stiotch Along. And I'm sure you would have heard about the Stiotch Along from a whole bunch of people. Um, I am participating with the Frooks admins. I've decided to say Frooks, even though I think it's Frooks. Because you... Yeah, anyway, I'm not getting into it. But um, it just works with our team name. So the Frooks admin group, which is Heather from Link is My Homeboy, Adele from Adele Cat Stitches, Amanda from Stitch Pixels, Shannon from Stitchy Shannon 85, and Rita from Rita Marie Stitching Adventure. Oh my goodness. I know you all. Um, we're in a group, a little Facebook chat thing, and we have a group now for our team, which is Mother Frockers. Frockers. Just putting it out there. Don't ban me. Anywho, um, and this Yachalong is known to be like snarky and like a bit naughty and stuff. So yeah, I was kind of into it. Now the stitch along, if you don't know, which you probably do, is a stitch along that is a really, really big mystery. So you don't know anything about what you are stitching. We have no idea what the end design is going to be. There's theories, but they're probably all wrong. They're known for stitching stuff and then you like turn it upside down and you're like, oh my God, or you stitch a bit and then they add bits later and it's actually letters, like random stuff like that. So 
we decided to do that. It gets released here. So in Australia, it gets released on Sundays at 12 noon. Um, this week it's getting released today at 12 noon. I think they're doing it like a day early. For, I don't know if there's even a reason. Um, so yeah, I'm going to show you mine. So I am caught up. I caught up day before yesterday because of Ikea. I wasn't able to stitch even though it's like nothing. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my threads too. Because we don't know what we're stitching, they gave us suggested palettes, so then you could choose your own. So I just choose my own to suit my fabric. So, which way does it go? This way. It's just little. Um, this is Nita Midra's from Adele, because she's the best. So that's where it is now. Yes, it says 69, but it probably won't be 69 um, in the end. And they're probably not going to be eyes. So who knows? It could go this way. It could go upside down. I'm not sure. And um, this is a piece of 36 count linen that someone pretty awesome dyed. And I'll tell you about that later. So yeah. Now my threads. We had to choose A, B, C, D. Um, this is my main color. It's Silks For You from January this year, number four. It's this really nice um, green, variegated green. Uh, the next color I chose was for the little swirly bits and this is Silks For You April this year, number four as well. And that's a very variegated pink. It goes from light, very light to darkish. Next color I chose was for the leafy things and this is Silks For You March 18, number five. And it's not very variegated. There are some little bits, but it's mostly just that bright blue and it looks awesome. I'm so glad I picked that. And the last color is on top of the swirly bits and this is from Silks For You June this year, number three. And it's a, a darker pink, but it is variegated as well. It goes in and out. And I think my colors look awesome. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'm really looking forward to continuing this stitch along. It is the fourth part today and there's eight parts. So we're almost halfway. So I'm trying to keep up with it. With the team um, aspect, there are team challenges. You don't have to be on a team, but we decided to. There are team challenges and we're currently like tied with a whole bunch of people for like ninth or something. Um, and the latest challenge was a spooky challenge to create something spooky. And I made the most low budget horror film trailer um, about frogging stuff. So... <laughs> Um, I'm hoping it gets at some points, but who knows? And we find out tonight, so that'll be cool. As in, tonight, their time, it's actually going to be like middle of the day for me. It's all very confusing. Anyway, and then the another part of the challenge was to do a team piece. So everybody works on a piece of stitching. Now, there was point. there's points for distance traveled and like a whole bunch of other stuff. And we all live on different continents except for two girls. So I live in Australia. Rita lives in Norway. Um, Adele lives in Scotland, Heather lives in the US, and then Shannon and Amanda live in Canada. So we were like, oh my God, if we do this, we're going to get heaps of points. But it was like, how are we going to get a piece from one place to the end place by December the 8th or whatever it is. So I have, um, we figured out that if we just, we can just do our best and try. And then if it gets really close to the end, someone can just really quickly finish it and then it'll be done. They're not big pieces. The one that we've chosen is a Geeky Stitching Co piece. And as you know, they're quite small and easy to do. Um, we decided that we will continue to do this for each other because um, we were trying to like who gets the piece. Um, and we thought, why don't we all choose a Geeky Stitching Co piece and then we can um, eventually, everyone will get one if we just send it to each other. Um, it was decided that I would start the piece because I have the pattern. So I did. Um, and we did a, like a number, random number generator to figure out who that was going to be. And it was Shannon. So Shannon chose her piece and, um, I stitched a little bit of that on a piece of fabric that someone pretty awesome dyed as well. Um, and send that off to Rita. So Rita should be getting it. She really should have got it this week, but the postage is a mess. I paid like 40 something dollars for Express International and it's been like a week and a bit. And they're like, yeah, it'll get there in five days. No, it hasn't. <laughs> it's got to Norway, but the bit from Oslo to her house is been a complete mess. And um, I'm really annoyed that it, like I spent like heaps of money. And if I just spent the normal amount, she'd probably get at the same time. Postal services need to really step up their game. Anyway. So hopefully she can get that on Monday 
and really quickly stitch and send it and it was really a really really quick stitch um I did like one little row or something and it took me like an hour or probably even less than that um and we're all choosing our own thread so we're not doing the cold fall I chose a Jodoro Designs thread that's completely variegated and somebody would choose something different it's going to be total patchwork and I love it and I cannot wait to um do more of those so I'm really excited so that was another new start but not really anywho that's it for whips and we're 25 minutes in what's going on this is awesome um i'm in a really weird mood i'm talking really fast so i do apologize you can put me on like slower speed or you can speed me up if you're over it up to you i'm going to move to hall now and i've got st like a bit of stuff but it's like all random um yeah it's really random and i'm not doing i have it on my list in a particular order but when it came to putting everything down everything was moving around and falling off everywhere so I'm just going to grab things and put them down again. So the first thing I'm going to show you is I decided to get some of these, these empty baubles and fill them with my orts. So these orts are from, I think, 2016, 2017. Not like 2016, 2017, like all jumbled together. And I've started the next one. It's in my cupboard for more of them. I think it may have some 2018 in here too. I'm not doing it like years. It's just like filling them up. So I've got two. I have another one in my cupboard that's like a tiny bit full. My mum stole the other one in the four pack. So I'm going to have to get <laughs> some more. She keeps like seeing the stuff that I'm, because she stitches too. Um, she's more of a knitter, but she does stitch as well. And she, um, she like sees the things that I have and she's like, oh, I want that. Like she's on my needle minders. Oh, I'd love some. I bought her too. <laughs> um, and she uses them and She's, she's suggested them some things for Christmas, like a Q-snap and stuff. So I'm going to get her like a stitchy pack. It's going to be fun. So she stole this and she's using this. I do too, but it's a cool idea. I had them in little Ikea jars, but it looked really dumb. I think these look really much cooler and they'll look awesome on the Christmas tree. <sighs> I need to speak slower, but I just can't. I'm just in a really good mood. I don't know why. Um, I had a depressing day on one of the days. I don't know what it was from. I was just sad. I came home from work and I was sad. So I sat on my couch and I bought stuff. And <laughs> one of the things that I bought, or a few of the things I bought, were some needle minders from Needle Minder Obsession. And the reason why I love this place is because they're awesome needle minders and they're like in Australia. Who knew? Um, but that's where I always get stuff from. So here's my little card of needle minders. So we've got Scottish... I was pointing like back here. Scotland thistles, which... I saw and I died over because my family is Scottish and I love everything Scotland. It's not going to like focus really well anyway. And then we've got a crown. I had ordered a deer, um, but she was out of stock and this was my second choice. So I got a cool crown and then she threw in this little bunny. How cute is that? So now I have three more needle minders that I definitely didn't need. Oh, and it came in this really cool bag that was really shiny. So I was happy with that. Um, I did some other shopping on my couch, but I'll show you that in a moment. Next thing is my Sparkly's Fabric of the Month for September. Came in and I get the 32 count Murano. It says on the thing. Yep. 18 by 27 piece. It's a really cool color. It's almost purple. It's like a purpley brown, but it's like really cool. I don't have anything like this. Oh my God. I just realized what I could stitch on this. Oh my God. I'll show you it in a minute. That just really like scared me then. <laughs> What's wrong with me today? I hope you don't mind this mess. So I'm really, really, really happy with this because it's really different. I've never had anything like it. And I was getting a little bit over like pastel colors. So this was really cool to have. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sparkly, sparkly, sparklies. Next is Silks for You. I think I said in my last video that um, I hadn't got my threads yet for September and they came like the next day, which is how it is. So here are September's threads. I think. Awesome. So you get a variegated in each one and then there's like a color theme. Sometimes it's like shades of one color. Other times it's just like whole bunch of colors and these are very vibrant look at these but then look at that bam so 
so we've got like this really nice Christmassy red, a blue, green, a deeper red, and this amazing variegated. I have plans for that in my head. These are the best threads. I love using these. Um, it's awesome. I've been putting them into my giveaways that I've drawn here um, to the colors that are really similar, but I'm kind of running out of them. So <laughs> I have to think of something else to put in there instead, but cool. That was September and this one is October and this came in not long ago. These ones are muted. It's a lot different, but very like autumnal colors, like severely autumnal, <laughs> severely autumnal. So they're really pretty. I just like touching them a lot, which I probably shouldn't do because bad. Okay, next we have the pattern portion of this. Um, on eBay, I was perusing and it's dangerous. And I found Bluebeard's Princess and it was up there for like $34. And I looked around and I could find it for way cheaper from overseas for shipping. So I put in, uh, cause it said or offer. So I offered um, cheaper and they accepted. So cool, I have it now. And I really like it. I've seen some people stitch this and it's like, it's like cool on the picture, but in real life, it's like, goddamn, that's pretty. So I have that for whenever I get buried with all of my patterns when I die, that I haven't stitched yet. And then I found this really cool thing on cross stitch dash on loan, the Aussie one. I found an out of print mirabilia for $30. And that doesn't happen very often. And it is Autumn Queen. Obviously, like, it's not, like, there's rips and stuff. But the, I've looked at the pattern and it's, like, perfect. And it's shiny too. Oh, my God. Um, Autumn Queen. Autumn's my favorite season. I was super duper excited to find it. If I ever find the others, yes, I would get them. But I'm not like, I must have a set. Because she's just pretty by herself. Like, that green in her, like, bodice is beautiful. So have it i'm so excited no plans to start it anytime soon um i got home one day and i think matt had been at home all day maybe he had a day off i'm not really sure and i <laughs> looked at my stitches spot and there was a pattern sitting there so he bought me a pattern and it's on from the internet um this isn't the pattern and you can't really tell the colors oh it kind of is so i'm just gonna hold it back here this is a dragon, obviously, um, and it's called a space dragon or a galaxy dragon, and they're from D and D, and it's really pretty. It's got a bunch of purple in it, and so he put it out for me and bought it for me. It was really really sweet. And then I was like, "You have to help me pick a fabric now," and he was like, "Why did I do this?" <laughs> and then we picked this one because it's actually not that big. This is another piece of thirty six count linen that someone really cool dyed. So um, I'm going to stitch on that and I thought it was perfect. And it's not too purple, it's more gray. Um, so it's kind of great. If there was more of a galaxy type, I would have, cause I think it can be called a galaxy dragon as well. Um, but that piece will do. Very happy with that. We're getting to the end of fall people. It's all good. Um, so these are the three patterns I bought when I was sitting on my couch when I was sad. The first one, and these are all from Mandarinks on Etsy, and I'll put a link below to her, their shop. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure Russian designer. Um, this one is Daenerys and her dragons. I couldn't deal with the snuggles. That's adorable. This is that one. This one is called the Phoenix, and I can't deal with all the orange because I love orange. And then the last one, if I can put these somewhere, is called Hufflepuff. And I am a Hufflepuff. Now, where is the thing I have before? I'm wondering. Maybe? That might work. Um, how pretty is that? Like the, the brown is the fabric. So that would be behind it instead. Like, that's so gorgeous. I've seen this for a while. It's been around. And when I was sad, I was like, I'm getting it. I deserve it. I'm really sorry if you don't like me in this mood. <laughs> but we're going with it. And then yesterday. 
yesterday happened. Um, oh, hang on, before I talk about yesterday, if you look at this really beautiful tidy shelf, I'm going to tell you about some things in it. This bit here, this blob of brown, that is like a basket thing that my mother gave me. She had it, she was like, anyone want this? To my sister and me, and I said, yes, it's hold, now holds on my whips. My active projects are in there. These two white magazine holders are from Ikea and they hold all of my patterns. I used to have them in an accordion file, but it, was n it wasn't happening. It was getting too full <laughs> and it wasn't working anymore. So it, these are very, very tight and I'm gonna have to put those patterns in. So I don't know how that's gonna work, but they're there. Now this is also from Ikea and that holds all of my fabric beautifully because my, as in my fabric from Color Cascade, Sparklies and any other hand dye fabrics, um, they're all in there because they were just falling around because of all the plastic. Here is a whole bunch of other fabric, but that's like plain white stuff and more aidery things and that's really dirty. So that will eventually get cleaned, but <clears throat> excuse me, that looks really cool. This is my favorite shelf in my whole wardrobe. Should I stop moving my finger? Yes. Anyway, yesterday happened. Um, I got a message last week that just went from Deb. And Deb is a um, long-time viewer of my floss sheep and a big supporter of everything I do. Um, she's in all the Facebook groups that um, I do admin for, which is really lovely. And she comments on stuff and she always comments on my videos. And she sent me a message saying, hey, I'm cleaning up my stuff and I have a whole bunch of things that um, I want to give you to give away, um, like in my magazine giveaways and stuff. And she's like, do you want some things? And I was like, duh, <laughs> of course I do. She's like, I know you're trying to get rid of stuff. I'm like, that's okay. I have a room. So she's like, okay, I'm putting a package in the mail for you. I was like, cool. I got home yesterday and I was like doing stuff. And then I looked at my city spot and there was a package on there. I said to Matt, is that for me? <laughs> He's like, yep. I don't know why he just doesn't put it on the table like I do with his stuff, but that's just me. Anyway, it was there and I picked it up and it was so heavy and I got really excited. And then he was in here painting and I sat down on the floor, just somewhere near here. I was like, I'm going to open this right now. So I'm going to show you the stuff that she gave me to give away so that you know what's coming up. Um, she also gave me some money for postage for giveaways, which I was like, you did not have to do that. So that was really, really sweet. I'm just going to move that out of the way. Um, there's a lot in here <laughs> and she wrote a little note saying keep what you want give away the rest and I chose one pattern because I'm restraining myself and it's in ink circles so I will eventually do that my voice is a bit funny so I'm sorry if I cough a little bit um, I'm going to zoom through these and just know that I will be giving away a Deb pattern each video now. So maybe I should take it out of the plastic because that's going to be really annoying for a long time. Let's do this. That should be better. Okay. We've got cute as a button from JBW Designs. And it's a little birth... It's almost like a snippet from um, Lizzie Kate. It's a little birth announcement thing. Speaking of Lizzie Kate, we've got um, a flip at holidays with charm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm a mess. And it's the St. Patrick's Day one. So that's cool. I just don't know where I'm going to put anything. Let's just throw them over there. It's a fabric. 14 count eater. I may use that. I may not. I might give it to someone. I don't know. Um, two little kits, and they're both very Christmassy. We've got a little snowman, and we've got a little Christmas tree, and they're from Palad, I'm assuming. Super duper cute. And I think they come with a little frame as well that you can hang up. See up there? That's awesome. Um, I love me cats. That's really cute. A little kit from Mini Kits by Heritage Crafts. This one is Promises by Just Nan Designs. Cute. This one is from the Sweetheart Tree and it's called Tangled Shamrocks. So that one's pretty much black work in that one. There's a charm in the middle, which does it have it? No, no charm for that one, but that's okay. I'm sure you could stitch something or do something else. One for the cat lovers. This is a Margaret Sherry 
collection and it's Pursuit. Oh. There we go. Um, this one is a Little House Needleworks. It's called All Dolled Up. Oh, it's part of the All Dolled Up collection, I'm assuming. And it's the Merry Skater. It's a Christmas piece. I was tempted by this one, but I don't stitch Christmas much. So what's the point in keeping it? I'd rather give it to someone who does. This one is Dimensions, Ruth J and Bill D Moorhead. I'm assuming they design it. And it's called Guardian Angel. And it's another birth one. It says, Guardian Angel, pure and bright, guard me while I sleep tonight. And it has the name and the date of the birth. And it says 97. So I'm assuming it was designed in 97. 96. Oh my goodness. Okay. Next one is a Country Threads. This was a free chart and it's called Smile. I really like that. It's all black work, obviously, and back stitch down here. So smile is a gift, is a beautiful gift. Oh, it says A at the top. Ha uh ha, -huh, grammatically correct. A smile is a beautiful gift you can give every day. And I'm sure you could just stitch smile if you wanted to in some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful threads. Awesome. This one is from Helen Phillips. Um, it looks like it was from a magazine. Um... And it's called Live, Laugh, Love. It's like a little mini sampler. Super duper cute. This one is another one that looks like it was from a magazine. It's by Heritage Crafts um, by John Clayton. And it's called Hannah, I think. Yes. That's Hannah. Next is Alicia Arts. Um, by and it's designed by Paula Vaughan and it's called The Seamstress next oh the next three are magazines so I'm going to go through I think they are yep I'm going to go through these and pull out the patterns and I will show you them as we go through the giveaways um, I think I'm going to do have to do some Instagram ones because I'd like to give away as much as I can um, quicker than I do on my videos because I only do these once a month so I'll be pulling out those. But the plan is I'm going to give away a magazine pattern, a Geeky Stitching Co pattern, and a Deb pattern each video. So three giveaways each video, which is awesome. So thank you so much, Deb. I've already said thank you a bunch of times, but thank you, thank you, thank you again. I can't, cannot believe it. You're amazing. All right, let's move on to something really cool. Um, you know how I was talking about those hand on fabrics that were dyed by someone really cool? That's me. I had a really, really fun time. <laughs> In um, the beginning of October with my sister and Matt, we, um, well, it was mainly my sister and I and Matt helped sometimes. We, I had a bunch of this fabric that I um, had collected, which was 36 count linen. There was, I think a 32 count, but we didn't use that one. Um, and some Ada that was like in colors that I was not gonna use. So it was like a beige color for one of them, like a natural color, mm, probably not natural. It was definitely more like beige. And then the Ada was like a white or antique white. Um, and I just don't use those anymore. I prefer the color fabrics. Um, so I decided to dye them so I would actually use them. Um, we went to Spotlight and I looked at a couple videos. I looked at, um, the main one I looked at was Farm Girl's video. Um, and she used the Tide dye, the liquid ones. And when I went to Spotlight, they were amazingly expensive so I was like I can't afford <laughs> to dye my own fabric so we were thinking about it and we decided to that was weird we decided to use the powder form and she was like don't use the powder form in her video because it's messy um, but we just like we'll just have a go um, so we ended up on these powder forms and they're from Dylan and so I have a whole bunch of colors in this they're about that full what it's for um, but yeah, it's that color of the blue there, Bahama blue. And yeah, so we got those and we were looking around and my sister found some yarn dye kits that were on clearance for half price for 10 bucks. So we got one and then since then I've bought two more <laughs> because with that dye you have to use it all at once because it's a powder in a bottle and you put the water in and um, 
yeah, you have to use it once you can't keep it anywhere whereas with the powders like these you, we have clips that we use over the top and we can use them again later so this is what the yarn dye kits look like this is just an example so as you can see it was on clearance for ten dollars it actually was 25 so it's less than half price um and these are are they by anyone the color lab tulip custom color lab i think and it actually came with um the yarn uh, a pattern and it comes with gloves the dye bottles and the dye um, guide I gave the yarn to my sister and the patterns just sitting in here so this one has four colors in it um, the other ones over here so they they look like that and so they were really easy to use once I got the hang of them so I tried a number of methods um, we tried we put glad rub down or clean wrap and we put a piece in and I just like went all over it and it was like really it was like too much uh, dye in it not as in like it was too bright I just put too much quantity of the actual water solution on it um, so we did two of those and then I went to the bowl method that um, farm girl was using and I really I kind of just like made it up as I was going along I used some of what she had done and then I kind of just went for whatever I was doing um, I really, really, really like this being in the bottle because I can, I could, I can just like drip it out and squeeze it out wherever I wanted or rub over the top with it. It's really good. So I'm going to show you some of the fabrics that I dyed. And if anybody would be interested in a tutorial in my holidays, I would be more than happy to make a tutorial about how to um, dye the way that I was using those and using the powders as well. So just let me know. Obviously, there's a whole bunch out there, but if you want another one, I'm happy to do it. So I had some Ada. Now this is one of the ones I think that I started with and I I think it was this one. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, and this is one that I just like oversaturated. It was just like a whole bunch. <laughs> but it actually turned out really nice. Nice color. It's got purple and blue in it. So that was a good one. I mean, they're all good. I'm very happy with all of them. This is another one. This is, I think was the first or second one that I went crazy with so this was when it was wet it looked like space and then when i washed it out um it still looks pretty cool though it's got like a bit of gray and purple and blue in it it looks really nice so i let some of them some of them i had wrapped up in glad wrap and some of them were just in their bowl wrapped up yeah so some of them were folded in glad wrap like this some of them were in a ball in glad wrap and some of them were in a bowl in glad wrap so the ones that were in a bowl and in a bowl i washed out sooner than the other ones because they were exposed to the air more i think or i don't really remember whatever i can't really tell the story now this one i don't remember i've used a chunk off for the um round rubber we're doing for shannon so this is the whole thing this is one that Matt t chose the colors for and it turned out more green than blue because he loves blue. So I did a blue gray actually turned out green, but I really like it. These would be great for a whole range of different types of stitching. I'm really happy I have them because I've already used them for a number of things. So it's really good. It's cheaper. This is a very, very pink and purple one. They're coming out pretty true to what they actually look like. Um, I did a fair bit of orange because <laughs> it's me. That's one. That's this is on linen now. The the ones I just showed you been Ada. This is on that 36 count linen. And I have another one. I think one's a little bit more modelled than the other. This one's really cool. I found out a really nice method for doing modelling, and so I kind of went for it with a few of them. Really, really love this one. This one's like my stitch along, stitch along one. Sorry. Um, then we did some green, and that's actually got blue in it too. There was one that was like a mistake. I I think it's coming up, and it was really horrible. And then <laughs> in the bowl, and then I washed it out immediately, and it was gorgeous. Um, it might have even been that one. I think it actually might have been purple. I'm not sure. But there's another green one. Yeah, there's some spots on them as well, but they're little, so they'll be good for little things. That's another cool one. 
So I did some bigger pieces and smaller pieces. I think this is the one that looks like crap. Yeah, it is. This is the one that looked really horrible in the bowl and it turned out really nice and I really like it. I'm gonna, a lot of people aren't into the big colors, but I am. So I put like yellow and orange and pink and purple and like a whole bunch of random colors and I put it in and I was like, this is disgusting. So really quickly, I was like to my sister, what do I do? Like, do I just like keep this really gross piece or what should I do? She's like, go wash it out and see what happens. So I washed it out and it turned out beautiful. I was really happy with that. And then these, oh, there's another like pretty much orange. It's a little bit lighter than the other ones. These ones are really, really pretty. Um, this one's a pinky yellow. It's a little bit pink and then it's showing up. I really like that one. And these ones we had wrapped and they actually looked like a rose when they were wrapped up because we just like scrunched them up. It looked like a rose. It was really pretty. This one's like a peachy color. I'm really happy with those. Um, they were, re it was really fun to do. I thought I was going to hate it, but I actually really liked it. Um, it's definitely a whole day thing because of how long, and we started quite late. So I was actually rinsing those at like nine, 10 o'clock at night. Um, so if I was to do it again, I'd probably get all my, I've got all my stuff now, but if I was to start again, I'd get all my things one day and start the next day. Um, but yeah, I'd probably try and do them all in the morning. So I'll be rinsing them in the um, late afternoon, but really fun. I really highly recommend it. I'm not a color person. Like I'm not artistic at all. I just kind of think all oh, those colors look right and chuck them in together. So um, even if you don't think you are, I'd have a go at it if you can. And if you can find stuff like this, like I know it says yarn, but it works. I don't know. I don't think it's color fast. I rinsed it out till there was no dye left in the water when I was just, I just rinsed it out underneath the sink. I didn't like cook anything or <laughs> cause I know, oops, all my fabric just fell off. That's fine. I know that people cook stuff and everything, but I didn't do that. It just kind of sat there and rinsed out in cold water. And it was, it was awesome. Okay. Let's move into plans. Cause there's a bit to talk about. And we're at 52 minutes, which I'm so happy with because I um, have been rushing and it's shorter than I thought it was going to be. That's good. Not rushing on purpose, rushing as in I'm speaking fast because I'm happy. I really like making videos. Um, and I'm, I only do them once a month. So when it comes around, I get really excited. So plans at the moment in my Pokemon Cross Stitches group, which will be linked below as it always is. We are doing Pokevember and Pokevember is a 30 day challenge to work on your Pokemon piece that you choose every single day. So at the moment I'm doing, um, when I'm focused on another piece. So like at the moment I'm doing my cells, I will do one color in a block and put it away. So like last night I did like 15 stitches, but I still worked on it. Um, but eventually this month it will be a focus piece. So we'll get some more time on it. So I'll do that. So speaking of cells, um, because we've got three letters in the legendary creature cell this month, I'm giving myself two days for each letter. I'm already a day ahead because I finished the other, the one I did yesterday, the T in a day. So I'm hoping to keep up with that. Um, is my camera all right? It's being a bit funny. Anyway, so I'm giving myself until the eighth to finish that. I think that's enough time. Third, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Yes, that's right. Um, so two days per letter and one day for the Kings and Queens King. So that one is really small. It doesn't take me very long. Um, from then on, so it should be about the ninth. I'm going to work on my autumn piece that I showed you before, and I want to finish that piece in November. So I'm going to work on that until it's finished. Um, I'm going to give myself 10 days to finish that piece. So from the ninth to the 19th, um, which is a week and a bit. So it should be heaps of time to finish that off. So really hoping that happens. Um, then, then I'm going to give myself, um, from the 19th to the 22nd on Epic Pokemon. So just a few days, um, because of something else that's coming out. So let me find something. Here it is. I have pre-ordered the Lakeside Needlecraft with the Tiny Monodist Medieval Mansion Cell. And here's a picture of what we know so far. Um, it comes out on the 23rd and the first part is the border. 
And the aim for me is to do the room's border at least. Um, I'm giving myself from the 23rd to the end of the month. So about a week to work on it. So I want to get the room borders done and then just keep going with the border until the end of the month. This is the fabric I'm going to use. It's called Welcome to the Jungle. It's by Sparklies and it was their fabric of the month in March this year. It's one of my favorite pieces of fabric I have and it is perfect for what we're doing it on. There is a um, exclusive fabric, but I don't really care for it. So this was my choice and I love it and I want more of this fabric. It's gorgeous. Um, so yes, I'm really excited to work on that. I've been loving seeing the Haunted House and Santa's house. Um, obviously Halloween isn't huge here, so I'm never gonna stitch it, but it was awesome to see people like Adele and Amanda are stitching that. Um, Shannon stitching Santa's house, which is super cute. So I'm really excited to do a medieval one. I'm interested to see what happens because I love all that kind of stuff. So that's gonna be my end of the month thing. Now I told you when I showed you Epic Pokemon, there's a bit of a story. So let me explain that. When I brought out Pokemon early this, earlier in October, I was stitching on it and I was thinking about um, how I'm going to finish it in 2020. And I was thinking about um, the, it's just going to be really weird to people that um, don't, I guess don't teach, um, not don't teach, but like, I don't know. It's just going to be a bit strange to some people, I think. But anyway, um, I started this piece at the October 2016. So that was just after I got the job offer for the job I have now. Um, and I showed it to the kids in my class last year, my three fours, because I loved Pokemon and they were always asking me about it. And I teach some of those kids this year and they've been asking me about it too. And they, they say, have you finished knitting it? It's really cute. They have no idea. Um, and I show them and they go, wow, that's amazing. You're so cool. Like this. They don't say you're so cool. I'm just making that up. <laughs> No, that's really funny. I have been told that before, which is nice. But anyway, they said, this is really cool. I really like it. And every time I show them when I finish a page, they're like, whoa. When I finished off the second row, they were like, that's amazing. Um, even the girls. Like, Pokemon is not a widely female thing um, in terms of kids that age. Like, obviously, adults, it doesn't really matter. But kids that age, it's more geared towards boys. But... Um, the girls have like started getting into Pokemon a little bit, which is really cool. They, they're they really good um, artists in my class. So they draw me Pokemon all the time, especially Evie because Evie's my dog. Um, and so these kids that I'm teaching this year, so some of them I taught last year in 3-4. They're now 4-5. So I have a 4-5 class. And so at the end of next year, they will be graduating primary school and going to high school. And they, some of those kids will be some of the kids that were in my first ever class. So they mean... A lot to me every kid is special obviously um every kid means a lot to me but these kids are just like they're just a bit different because of that um and that's something that i hear a lot of teachers say that they always remember their first class um and so i kind of want to i kind of want to finish it before they graduate um i want to be able to show them it, it and it doesn't like make sense to a lot of people i don't think it will um because it's like, oh, who cares? Like, whatever. They, they don't need to see it. But I really want them to. And I want them to... Um, I want to be able to show them it in person. Like, I want to take it into school and show them that it's finished. So, I was talking to Adele about it. And she's always really supportive of my plans, even though they change all the time. And I really do appreciate that, Adele. Because I do get into a bit of mess sometimes <laughs> when I talk about planning. And I just, like what do I do? Blah, blah, blah. And she just tells me what to do. So the aim is to finish it in December next year. So 13 months. Um, I'm currently on page 12. I'm getting near the end of page 12, um, which means that I will have 13 pages to do in 13 months, which means I need to do at least a page a month. Um, I'd rather do more. I'd rather be finished before December if I could, but who knows. I was going to try and finish that page that I'm on in October, but I just didn't work out with all the stuff that was going on. My screen. There we go. So I have reevaluated next year a lot, and I want to 
Um, really heavily focus on it. I'm going to be pretty monogamous with it in uh, my holidays coming up because obviously that's when I get my most stitching done. So in the summer holidays and in all school holidays, I'm probably just going to not stitch on anything else because that's days and days that I stitch <laughs> and I'll have time to do it. So I really, it's a big deal for me to get this done. Um, now this row and the next row are pretty similar, but the final row, the pages are shorter. They're not as many stitches. So that should be less time. I really hope that's the case anyway. Um, so yeah, a page a month means like I would need to do 200 stitches a day, but that doesn't happen all the time with other stuff that's going on. So um, next year I'm not going to be doing, and I wasn't going to do this anyway, but I'm not going to be doing any cells that are coming out because I need to do them at the right time. That's just how I am. I must do them, must be aligned with them. So, and be caught up. So I'm not going to be doing any. Obviously I'm doing the mansion sale, the medieval mansion sale, which is going to go into next year. Um, but that's uh, like the rooms are the main bits, the border and stuff. It'll be part of a whip all next year. But Pokemon will be my main focus. Um, so you're going to be seeing a lot of Pokemon and probably less of my other whips, but that's okay. I know Pokemon is a bit of a hit with a few people, so I'm happy to keep doing that. So yeah, that got a little bit like mm, for me, but yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot of Pokemon and that's going to be my main focus for next year. And for the rest of this year, it's going to be heavily featured. Now, obviously in November, there wasn't much time for Pokemon, <laughs> but I'm hoping that my autumn piece takes less time than I thought. Um, yeah, I'm just going to yeah power through as much as I can. I'd love to finish this page this month at least and get a good start on the next one because that means I'm going to be a little bit behind. So I'm going to need to power through. So let's talk giveaway and then we'll be done. Amazing. Um, giveaways, giveaways. Where did I put them? Here we go. So last month I offered up a piece that was not taken up the month before and that was actually rules you must be over 18 if you're not over 18 you need to have your parents permission to enter don't say giveaway in the comments below you must be okay with um any paper patterns being folded because i fold them and put them into an envelope and you must be okay with magazines being sent magazine patterns being ripped out and sent to you as well because that's what i use too um and i'll talk about what you need to write in your comment when i get to it this is the one that I offered up again. It's a Holbein, Holbein Embroideries, the Blackwork Specialist piece. A couple of people wanted this, which was really cool. And it went to Stitching is My Happy Place on Marie. So she's going to get that. So um, Marie, just send me a message on, I don't think I have your address. So just send me a message on Instagram or email me. And that'll be in the... Um, description box below and that will come to you that won't get folded I'll put that in just a normal envelope um next one was a wedding sampler this was from cross stitch crazy April 2016 and it's a hap and a, annoyingly I don't know the full photo but it's a happily ever after sale this is by Emma Condon from Citrovia and Deanna Ellett I hope that's how I say your name correctly. You got this one. So if you could please send me a message on Instagram or an email, which is in the description below. And so is my Instagram actually. And I'll get this sent to you as soon as I can. That one will be folded. Um, and by Geeky Stitching Co for last month was Squeeze Me. And I've stitched this before. It's a cute little glass of lemonade with a lemon slice with a face on it. Adorable. Um, a couple of people wanted this and Rita Marie's Stitching Adventure. Rita, you want this one. And I have your address. So I will send this to you um, at some point. I have some plans. Let's move on. Okay, so I've got, like I said before, three patterns to, sh to share with some people. Our Geeky Stitching Co. one is Killin' With Kindness. Gorgeous. Cute little banner. If you would like to stitch this one... If you want to win it, stitch, I would like to stitch the kindness and you will be entered into that one. The next one is from Cross Stitch Crazy, January 2017, issue 224. And 
Here's this by. It says exclusive design, but I can't see who stitched it. Oh no. No, who stitched it, who designed it. Mm, I feel bad now. Um, but it's a winter castle. That's probably better because you can see the stuff there. I think there's got, I think it's beads. Yes, it's got beads in it too, which is awesome. If you would like to stitch this, just say, I would like to stitch the castle and you will be entered into that one. And the Deb pattern we're giving away, I had it out, what did I put it there? It is, we're giving away this week is the Lizzie Kate St. Patrick's flip it if you would like to stitch this to say I would like to stitch the Lizzie Kate just put that I don't know you would like to be entered into that one they will be drawn just before I film my next video at the end of the month um I think I'm going to be doing some giveaway stuff on Instagram so make sure you follow me at Laura X Stitches to get in on those um otherwise that is everything and we're just over an hour oh my goodness um Thank you again to Deb. Huge thank you to Deb for all of that. Um, it's pretty awesome. I hope that my stitching happens this month. I'm really keen to get some progress on a lot of things. And to start, and I'll start, which is super weird. I've started like two things <laughs> this uh, last month and I'm starting another one this month. So it's really strange. Um, but in terms of next year as well, I know that there's been no year, no starts no starts 2019 I forgot the name floating around and that was my plan anyway I didn't have a name for it but now it has a name um I may start one on my birthday but that would probably be it I just I have enough stuff to like I've got Pokemon to stitch like I don't need anything else to start and I have enough whips in there to stitch anyway and enough patterns and stuff so I should probably stop buying things but the main things that I've got heaps of whips so I'm not doing any new starts next year except potentially my birthday that's the only kind of time when I can see that happening um if there's any birthday sales for people I love I will do a whip that's close to their birthday sale because most people are quite flexible with that kind of thing um make sure you enter the giveaway if you want those and I think that's about it have a really good November um I'm loving floss tube at the moment I'm catching up because I haven't been able to watch oh my goodness i've been able to watch it in a while so i'm catching up reader i'm currently watching your video so i love it um let me know about the um hand dyeing tutorial as well okay thank you so much for watching have a lovely november um and i'll see you at the end or right at the start of december it's nearly here people christmas time okay bye everybody <laughs>